right, number four, pitfall uh, paraglider maneuvers. Undereducated point for most pilots, asymmetric deflation. So the common mantras are one side deflates, steering clear. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. When the right side deflates, it's possible that looking at it might be too much and that just the simple act of looking at it could cause you a turn, for example, back toward the hill. So the way we describe it is that if you ever suffer an asymmetric, you want the story to be that you heard something up there, that you decided you might be well served to steer the side of the glider where the sound wasn't coming from, where the activity wasn't coming from, sort of aviate, keep the glider going in the generally correct and positive direction. And then maybe once that's all sorted and the glider is nicely underway, have a look and see what you've got. Maybe a little tip is still in, but you don't really want to be the one to look up there and stare at the glider when it asymmetrics, because usually your posture will fall apart. And when you're looking up here, you're not usually looking, leaning, braking here on the open side to keep the glider going straight. So it's worth knowing that you can have a big asymmetric. Um, it's about a one in a thousand phenomenon, meaning most pilots won't have a big story about an asymmetric that tried to ruin their day, but it could also happen to any of us on any day. So we need to train it. And the correct mindset is it could deflate, it could turn hard. It might even take me a moment to catch up with it. It could be instantly over here. When it does, if I'm low to the ground and I see some sharp angles close to the ground, maybe, just maybe, I'm going for the reserve immediately. We're talking a couple hundred feet here and below. If, as you link up with the glider, you still have a reasonable amount of altitude, if it starts to kind of trend your direction, like it's coming back above head, it looks like you're starting to have positive control, then your MO is to exercise appropriate brake on this side, try to keep the eyes generally in a positive direction, someplace that would be healthy to go away from the hill toward the landing area. And then one of the best tricks is to watch your hand give a nice, thoughtful input. That means sort of relaxed hand, nice, solid input. By watching it, it keeps your hand from doing things like grabbing the riser. And we've seen video where people grab the riser on the open side and obviously they check out. It also keeps his hand from doing stuff like the straight arm, which we know is particularly evil and it can cause its own malfunctions. So nice smooth brake input. Also, if you have a big asymmetric, the hand will need to engage before the weight shift really starts to work. So you can fix the eyes anytime, but the hand's going to need to come in there in order for the hips to be able to join. And by the time the glider's growing, into half a glider and beyond, then this part will be fairly easy. So I would recommend to any pilot, just when you have a time, sit in your chair, imagine the right side deflates, put your weight on your left cheek, watch your hand give a nice input here, practice training your eyes to go right in here, and remember that that move might just be the move that saves your bacon one day. You can practice it on both sides. This side deflates, the clean break to the right side, and the very last thing we would do is to look at the tip that's deflated and then maybe give it an input. Asymmetric deflation recovery, very, very proactive. You have a lot of work to do. You shouldn't do it in a mechanical way. We don't want you to overdo the recovery, but you definitely need to link up with your glider and this is your chance to save the day by giving just the right input on just the right timing. Definitely not a case for hands up. Back to 1993, Telluride competition, probably one of two competitions that year. We all fly off of Gold Hill, the launch is at 12.2. It's uh, morning, we do a, a quick task and then the conditions turn bad, so we're all supposed to get on the ground. And as I came over the last crest into town, on my, again on my 33 meter comp glider, I uh, have an asymmetric comes in, sticks somehow, and the glider's spiraling. In the business, they like to call that auto rotation now. Half the glider deflated, kind of stuck in, this side open. And totally to my surprise, and I don't believe this will happen to any of you, but as I gave brake on the open side of the glider, 
I had full, easy travel with no effect. And being a teenager at the time, or maybe 20, uh, my reflexes were pretty good. And uh, I had been doing a lot of kiting and I think I was just lucky again. But I decided it might be good to just reach up there and grab the rear riser because that have, might have greater effect. And as I gave a pull on the rear riser, the tip blew out, the glider snapped out of spiral mode. And I tried to pretend that that didn't happen. Tells the story of, of how it's the combinations that will get you. It wasn't just the asymmetric, it wasn't just the spiral. It was the combination asymmetric into spiral. And when I got in the spiral, I went ahead and did my normal protocol. It wasn't working. I had to be a little creative. The more you've been around, the more you talk to people about their stories and how they pulled it off, you will find that they had to be a little creative, that they had to do more than one thing at a time. And if you wanna dabble into high level flying conditions, hot gliders, um, aggressive flying with paramotors or otherwise, then you wanna make sure that you have some basis. So that would include a high level of kiting and experience and talent, um, practice and proficiency. It would also include working a nice long-term progression on flying skill, logging a lot of airtime in a lot of places over a lot of years.